the Holler Kings, where the horrors Southern fried. Come on. On every episode of the Holler Kings, we like to do a segment called Holler at Your Boys. Holler at Your Boys, y'all. It's a segment that's open topic when we can talk about anything we like at all. Anything at all. And what did you bring to the table this time, Um, Adam? I brought, uh, I figured, another fucking list! (laughs) <laughs> I figured I love list. It's one of my favorite things. I do too. And so I figured, you know what would be fun to do? Uh since we had so much fun ranking and y'all seem to love our ranking of the screen movies, <laughs> I figured we should do a ranking of the Evil Dead films. And we're we're going to focus on just the Evil Dead, not the TV show. Um because I feel like you just get into the weeds. Are you doing it by episode, by season, overall? Yeah, I feel like you could go a lot of ways. So, overall, I'd just say personally, I really love the the Evil De- the Ash vs. Evil Dead mm-hmm. se- uh, series. I, li- I liked all the seasons. Not every episode was 100%. But uh, over for an overall thing, I really enjoyed it. And I even enjoyed the Creep Show kind of spinoff episode. But I don't know how you felt about them. Um, that's just what I would say about those. We're going to stick to the films? Fair enough. Fair enough. What's, there's five films in this weird franchise. Mm-hmm. What's your fifth choice, Adam? <sighs> you know, I got to preface this by saying there's not a movie in this franchise that I don't like. Mm. I love, I like them all. Right, right. So even the one that is least for me is still a movie I absolutely love. Where you can go into our Scream one, and there were some I absolutely did not like. All these I love. Mm. I, this is one of the few franchises that are hitting on all cylinders for me. I enjoyed them all. But just to be honest, be fair with myself. Just One is just because it's so new. My fifth one would be Evil Dead Rise. Me too. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Now, we haven't talked about this. Uh, so, w- w- did you like it overall? Yeah, I liked it overall. Yeah. Um, I, I do think it's easily the weakest entry so far. Uh-huh. But, like you said, it was still fun. Yeah. And... and like I, I appreciate that they try to go in a different direction because obviously this one doesn't have, by and large, a cabin in the woods situation. Yeah. Um, but it still weirdly felt small because I think it basically, I'd say, eighty five percent takes place in one it's, apartment. It, it could have been a cabin in the woods. Right. Still, that's what I'm saying. It's like they're trying to make it different, but inadvertently they made it kind of the same type of film. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you could have easily, I mean, it's cool to kind of have that location, but we just don't get enough from like other characters mm. and, uh, getting outside of it. I mean, we get outside in the hallway a little bit in the elevator, in the, in the parking garage and all that. But, um, so much of it is spent just in rooms in a home that could easily be a cabin. But even like you said, that doesn't take anything away from it it just removes an element that could have been really new and fun Mm -hmm. to it could have got really you know uh demons too with it you know which was oh yeah you know that that's kind of what i felt it was going to be i figured they would have took a lot maybe just ideas in general from that considering it's set in an apartment building and all that too well the uh I read into the title wrong, I think, because when I hear Evil Dead Rise, I think High Rise. I do, too. And I thought that's kind of what we were in for, is what you were hinting at. Is this the idea that there'd be a lot of people involved? It Uh would almost be kind of like Gremlins 2-esque, where it's like Evil Dead gets loose 
you know, the deadites are loose on like a high rise, yeah. you know, and what happens, what kind of madness entails. But instead it's just kind of a rundown apartment and mostly in a single apartment. Like it's a rundown apartment building or complex or whatever, but it's pretty much isolated to one apartment Yeah, through the whole film. Uh, so to me, I think the title was kind of unnecessary almost. They could have just called it you know, Evil Dead Resurrection or whatever. You know what I mean? Just so you don't go in with those weird expectations maybe. But yeah. Also, I, I do feel like the opening sequence was really strong. Holy shit. And it kind of messed that it up so in a weird good. way. Uh, really? I, 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 I didn't feel... I, I felt like it was it was a perfect like gut punch to like lead us in. And I love how it comes back around at the end. Because we've kind of complained on here about like the cold open that then goes back and you know mm-hmm. i love how they related it but it not being related i thought that was a really cool idea and kind of still being like kind of just to subvert expectation being like oh we're at a cabin and then how do we get how did we get to this point and just that whole sequence of her like rising out of the water and then the evil dead rise comes up over the like mountain in the back it was really it was a really cool well, concept I mean, to me I think that's my issue with it. It's not that it was it was really well done, the opening sequence, but I feel like that's the strongest part of the movie. They front-loaded, uh-huh. like, the coolest image was her rising out of the water. I feel like that there's a deadite that rises up out of a lake, and it looks really cool uh, alongside the titles and everything. Yeah. Um, and, like, the fun they were having with the drone and... Uh, you know, just some of the the tropes of this this franchise and everything kind of played out in, in this little opening sequence. And I just feel like the acting and the just kind of alchemy of, of that opening was stronger than anything in the body of the movie. Mm-hmm. So for me, it just kind of like, it's cool that they had such a strong opening, but there's a piece of me that was just it kind of felt like it never really mustered up that kind of energy yeah. from there on out. Like yeah. there wasn't that much that I felt like was really inspired um, that happens. It was all totally serviceable and fun, yeah. but there was nothing beyond that point where I was like, Whoa, or like really, you know, well, um, it, it also, it also kind of, I think hinders this because with the 2013 remake, we were so expecting a just bloodbath, and this movie isn't that. Right. Like, there's some gory, definite gory moments in it, but it's not the bloodbath that that movie was. And that was my expectations going into it, because it looks like it pulls more from, from the trailers and all that. It looked like it pulled more from that than it did from the original series. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, I thought this did something really cool in giving us a bunch of characters that we really care about. I mean... We all love, absolutely love Ash, but do you really care about any of the other characters? Sure, right, right. You know? But in this, I really liked all the characters. You got the the sister that is like, I don't know, a guitar tech. Mm-hmm. And then you got the mother who's like over here, you know, she's a tattoo artist and all this other stuff. And the kids were all cool, you know. You got Stephanie and all that. I thought it was really created some really like likable enjoyable characters that you care actually cared about well i thought it was cool too where um there's kind of a trope in horror for the most part there's a few exceptions where you think kids are safe yeah and these kids were all like there's one very young kid and then the other two almost seem like preteen like they right seem just pretty like young. On that, i mean i guess some because one of them drives so right. they, they have to at least be around 16 but it, yeah they just look very youthful so there's For a sure. part of you that feels like these kids are kind of safe yeah and then when things ramp up and they're not it, it's it's pretty unsettling it's you know it's yeah. pretty effective how they play around with that idea because that's what when they first introduced all those characters i liked everybody but there was a part of me that was like well so, like, it's just the mom? Like, I was kind of, like, looking around just thinking, like, I guess they're going to introduce a bunch of other uh, people from the apartment complex to be bodies, which they kind of do. But yeah. no, you learn as the film goes on, no one's really that safe. Um, yeah. So, I thought that that was pretty cool that they played around with that a lot. I know? agree. Yeah. yeah. I really love – and it just had a lot of really cool uh, set design and, mm-hmm. like, uh, structures of, like, shooting from the – peephole 
of the apartment and like out into the hallway like that scene where the mother <laughs> is out there and sure, yeah. killing everybody and stuff like that there was just really cool stuff like that and um there was some stuff i i was disappointed in like the cheese grater scene mm -hmm. that was a big moment in the uh trailer, yeah. in the trailer and then it just Kind of left me disappointed. Um, I feel like they could have went really gnarly with it. A cheese grater is a fucked up weapon, mm. and they kind of just, I don't know they they didn't go as far as I wanted them to. But like I said, I like these characters so much that some of that disappointment and the lack of gore didn't really bother me that mm. much. Um, I I just really. I just really enjoyed how they kind of delivered. I like the idea. I thought it was cool. The whole idea of the kind of going back to like the original, like with having the records and stuff like that um, with the chance uh, on it and the character trying to stop it, but can't stop the record player. I thought all that was really cool. And it was a great idea to have it like in this old bank vault or something. Um, I thought, that, I thought all that was like, cool like structured story moments you know that's where the bruce cameo uh, bruce campbell cameo is yeah is yeah the record part yeah i the, saw uh, that I, I read somewhere that like the director explained that for his head canon he was picturing because spoiler ash has no cameo whatsoever in this um, yeah he was picturing it that being an out of time ash that like somehow got involved got a, in yeah. that recording or whatever, and that's kind of how he had can end it or whatever. So I thought it was kind of a fun idea. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I like the. I, I really hope they keep going with this. I mean, this movie was successful, so mm. I really hope they keep going with this because I love the idea of there are three different Necronomicons, mm. and you know we have a storied history. Uh, that can date back, you know, centuries, and you could tell some really interesting stories. You could tell some simple stories like a cabin in the woods, mm -hmm. or some really complex stuff like fucking Vikings or something. You know, you could really go to a lot you of unique kind of a predator route with it a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. could go some really unique places with it. You had these three books. Where have they been over time, and where have they ended up? How did they get there? I don't know. I think it's a cool premise. Like, where do we? Or you can just be like. Where did we go from here? We left that book and that particular Necronomicon and that record in that apartment building. Where does it turn up mm -hmm. next? We also got a possessed woman out in the, in, you know, in a cabin. Right. So right, right. what hap What could happen with that? You know, it's, it, there's a lot of cool ways to take it. I just really love, I love a lot of what, I like a lot more what they do with this movie than I dislike what they do with it's this fair. movie. I just, especially considering it's so new, it's hard to put it above anything else because mm -hmm. I've only watched it once. But overall, watching it once, I really liked it. Oh, I guess we can move on. What's mm -hmm. your next one? Oh, uh, I picked the OG Evil Dead as my next one. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's surprising. Mm -hmm. Okay. My, my biggest... <clears throat> reason for this is i'm thinking about how often i've revisited these movies over the years and it's probably the one i look at the least okay. i would say of the the four that you know are available to watch on a regular basis yeah uh, you know so i feel like it's solidly above the most recent one but you know a nuance below the other ones because uh -huh. like you said i like all these movies you know i have a soft spot for all of them so right but the og one it's more of like a relic of where all these guys came from, like Sam For Raimi, sure, I can see that. Bruce it's Campbell. definitely rough around the edges. It's rough around the edges, and it's fun because of that. That's part of, one of the reasons to watch it. But if you're going to get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of which one is the most entertaining and stuff like that, I think it's kind of arguable that, you know, for my own personal reasons, I would put the other ones above the original, you know? Yeah. Um, plus, I mean, let's face it, Evil Dead 2 they remake so much of the original for that film yeah. that the original movie kind of feels unnecessary sometimes yeah. when you go back to rewatch them and everything. So, right. Um, how about you? What'd you pick next? Uh, um, it kind of goes into what you were saying. I'm going to pick army of darkness mm. and it's just from the simple fact that it's probably the one I've watched the least. Right. I really w like it. And as I said, there's none of these I don't like. I love all these movies. But it's the one I've probably watched at least. I've only watched it a handful of times. I think and it's probably been a good, I don't know, like 15 or years since I've seen it. Well, that, and 
that's my next choice. Okay. So it's it's in the middle of my list. But for me, Army of Darkness, I really appreciate that they tried to do something totally different. They had this like little mini established franchise. And instead of making it in another isolated place, they made it sprawling yeah. and, and, you know, a totally different setting. They reestablish who Ash is, you know, make him a totally different type of character and have fun with him. So, I mean, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that for most people, that's their entry point into the franchise. Well, most people around our age, I'd honestly, say. Honestly, it may have been mine. I yeah. may have seen it before I watched any of the others. I, I, I'm not I'm not 100% on that. See, because I one of my oldest friends, he saw this in the theater. Like, he saw Army of Darkness in the theater not knowing anything about the franchise. He just saw the poster, thought it looked yeah. cool, and checked it out. And didn't even understand that there were previous movies. He just thought... The little prologue thing or it's just whatever like, you call it. just a quick yeah, way to set up this just, movie. Just to set up this weirdness or whatever. He didn't even question that there were other movies. Yeah. And, I mean, that's something to be said for this. Yeah. That, like, it kind of stands on its own weirdly, even though it's the third entry in yeah. this, like, cult movie franchise, you know. You, get, you can't deny how the charm of this movie, mm-hmm. though, and how much, as much as Campbell established... Uh, Ash in Evil Dead 2, he really has cemented him mm. in Army of Darkness. Well, and it's funny because for me, Army of Darkness was such a hallmark movie. Like, I feel like I was, you know, roughly 12 when I saw it. And uh, I remember showing it to my nephew when he was around that age, thinking like, oh, it's going to blow his mind. Yeah. And he watched it and I could tell he was politely laughing like I could just oh, tell he shit. he was like this means something to my uncle so I'm gonna be nice yeah. and laugh but I could tell he was totally not into it. Oh damn! And you I disowned him, right? Well, no, but I just <laughs> sometimes I wonder with people younger, like how how much how does much it stack up? Yeah, yeah, like how much is this franchise going forward gonna like so many of people my age? The entry point is Army of Darkness. Yeah, and I wonder how many people going forward are gonna find out through this new movie or the previous remake. And backtrack and find Army of Darkness and go, what the fuck? Yeah, like that's this is Evil Dead. Like it's such an outlier. You, you it know, stands out so much yeah. compared to the other ones. Ugh. Again, it's one I really love, but and it gives us some of his greatest moments. You know, this is my boomstick. Oh sure. And like, I the the ending. Uh, now I will say before we move on real quickly, which ending do you prefer? Oh, I do. I totally like the happy ending. Yeah, the, me too. The smart ending. I think it yeah. was wise that they I mean, went that way. It, it's the first one I saw, and the only one I knew for years and years. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why. But I, I never cared for like the like downer ending of him. Like, <laughs> I mean, I get the gag. Yeah, that, for that he, sure. You know, he screws it's, it's up. It's a so total much. Ash thing to right. do. But, but yeah, and. I mean, a part of me would love to see that sequel of him in like out of time, yeah. and, you know, kind of a no man, last man, you know, a mega man type of thing. Mm-hmm. But so what's your, my third, my third one, yes. um, I would go, uh, evil dead 2013. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's gonna, my number two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to definitely go. It's, it's one that I, I love it more every time I watched it. And it's one that I've loved in the theaters mm-hmm. and, uh, I was pretty excited for it, but I was kind of had my reservations about it. But um, it's one that just blew me away, and that was what I was going to say. I was talking earlier about how me and my son recently watched, you know, some movies. Mm-hmm. Evil Dead twenty thirteen was the other movie we watched. Mm. Um, so yeah, I just love it. It's gnarly. It's gory. It goes back to, I mean, it's just. It's bleak and it's fucked up. And I mean, we've talked about it before. Like when you can end a movie, face fucking a demon with a chainsaw while it pour, while it rains blood. I love you for it. <laughs> I and it, it should be noted. I feel like it's almost like the final death throes of remakes. Yeah. There, we had that whole decade where it was, you know, Texas Chainsaw, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, everything got sure. rebooted or remade, whatever. And it felt like inevitable that they would get, finally get to the lowest tier of franchise horror and get the evil dead. And I remember going into it just thinking like, this is so pointless. Like, why they even do this? 
and it totally subverted all the, you know what I mean? I totally thought it was terrific. I yeah. mean, maybe one of the strongest movies that year, but definitely my favorite of all these remakes. I mean, by easily, I mean, so by good. football field length. I yeah. mean, just, you know, and um, it, it doesn't help Jane. Is it Jane Levi? Levy? I don't know. She's mm. so good as me. Oh, and sure. It. Yeah. 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 I mean, and like you mentioned, I mean, like, there's no Ash type character. There's kind of some parallels, obviously. You but, really think it with the brother that right. he's going to be it, yeah. yeah. But they, but they kind of throw that out, and they, they, you know, there's kind of a trope of like, you know, um, like women taking over these franchises, like with like Star Wars, for instance, right? Like the main characters, yeah. you know, a young woman. This did it kind of earlier, but did it really well. You know what I mean? Where it was like really well earned and. Uh, I can't think of anyone that was annoyed by that. Like it was just really well done, and I don't know, it's a cool movie. Just top mm-hmm. to bottom, I thought. Um, even the premise of like you know you're going to this cabin in the woods, kind of as a rehab intervention type of hook. You know, right. just give it just kind of a little bit of a fresh spin. It's not just kids screwing around in the woods. It's like they have a purpose. I thought it was kind of a cool idea too. Yeah. So just kind of. Instead of just being the basic, oh, we're going right, on we're going to have sex and stuff like yeah. that. It's like a little it's bit more like, to it. Yeah, uh, there's just a little something more that mm-hmm. just gives a little more gravitas to it. Mm. Um, my number two, since you said that was yours, right? Yes. My number two would be Evil Dead One. Okay. Um, it's one of those that everybody forgets how scary and dark that movie was. It, it wasn't funny mm-hmm. um only going back with the cheesiness and the datedness and the cheapness of the effects do you get the humor out of it but that movie was bleak and dark and fucked mm-hmm. up i mean i remember watching that for the first time and it's scaring the shit out of me you know um yeah and it has the infamous does that have the tree rape scene it does yeah yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, honestly all of them but army of darkness does yeah even 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 evil dead 2 does yeah and the uh, remake, and then I guess Evil Dead Rise does the it. The remake does it as well? Yeah. Oh, man. See, I need to revisit all this stuff. Yeah. Or maybe I don't, considering what we're talking about. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing for me to be like, <laughs> I need to go visit all this tree <laughs> rape. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's got some bleak, fucked up. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. It's, it's, pre- it's pretty gnarly. Uh, and it's just one of those inspiring stories of just like the sort of like scrappiness of these kids just going off to uh, some rundown cabin in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Morristown. Yeah. Yeah. And just filming this movie that changed cinema, changed the structure of how we film. Sure. And changed the lives of this group of people. Like mm. you really can't put it past it, it's impact you can't put its impact past the language of cinema it's just it's pretty kind of it's kind of incredible what they accomplished like sam raimi is a style now a filmmaker absolutely so but i guess that takes us to both of our last ones which would be number evil one. dead 2 yeah evil dead 2 number yeah. one yeah absolutely i mean you just you can't you can't get a better horror comedy than that. It's pitch perfect all around. Mm-hmm. Where you got horror, straight horror with Evil Dead, comedy, mostly comedy. I mean, horror comedy, but mostly comedy with Army of Darkness. And you got this perfect blend of the two with Evil Dead, too. Well, the, the kinetic nature of Sam Raimi, I think, kind of re- elevates in this movie. Really on yeah. point. Like, he's. He is. I mean. He didn't show as much energy in any other movie until Drag Me to Hell that he shows in this mm. movie. You know, Drag Me to Hell was like his comeback to horror. And you could tell he felt like he was, you know, he was invigorated like he was with Evil Dead, too. Yeah, to no agree, to no agree. I, I, uh, I mean, for me, Evil Dead 2 is like, if you only could show someone... It's like, oh, you love the Evil Dead movies? What, what, where should I start? Or, you know, whatever. What, which I only have time to see one. I mean, everyone's going to pick Evil Dead 2, I feel like. You know, it, it tells a complete story. It's easily the best filmmaking nuts and bolts of all of them, I feel like. Um, and like you said, they do a great job of the pitch-perfect comedy and horror. You know what I mean? They do the, the great 
combination of the two. Yeah. They, you know what? We could almost grandfather in part two into the Holler Kings because the first one's obviously shot in Tennessee. I don't think the second one technically is. But it technically still takes place in Tennessee. Right, because they introduce... It's at the same cabin and everything, so... And, and they also introduce, like, yokels. Uh, Bobby Joe! Right, right, which I actually love those characters. I, I love so. Danny Hicks yeah. in almost everything. Pretty much anything <laughs> Danny Hicks is in, I love. Is he still with us? No, nah, he passed away he several did, years didn't back. He did, I remember yeah. that now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, he's he's terrific in it, and it's just it, it's a good example of like you know poking fun at a certain trope or whatever. I feel like they're yeah. having more fun with the trope than the actual group of people, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it takes you have to have some taste, you know, to do that kind of that parody. Mm-hmm. And long live Henrietta, you know, just such a gnarly creature. Mm. Any other closing thoughts on the Evil Dead franchise? I don't think so. Um, oh, I will say we were talking about Evil Dead Rise. I forgot to mention. I really, I really love. I mean, it's got nothing to do with the movie necessarily, mm-hmm. but I really love when these like new character, new people, actors, actresses come into the horror genre and are embraced by the fans, and they embrace it. Mm-hmm. Like I, the I think it's like Alyssa Sutherland or something. Who plays the mother in Evil Dead Rise? Like she has like maggot mommy written in her description on her Instagram and stuff like <laughs> that. Fun. I, yeah. I just really love when people embrace a genre like that. It's always it always warms my heart. I, I kind of dig it. So I hate to put it last, but I, I think subsequent viewings. Like I said, I really I still really loved it. There's not a bad movie in this franchise. Well, I was going to say, they're only like nuances away from each other for me. It's yeah, not like, because I put that one at number five, that it's just like way down. or You know what I mean? Yeah. It's only just like a couple of clicks. They're, I feel they're like. They're all you know? almost like right beside each yeah. other. I mean, yeah. I, I could see revisiting any one of these on a regular basis, you know, going forward. So, I mean. I, 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 soon as Evil Dead Rice hits Blu ray, I'll, I'll be buying it mm. for sure. So, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. That's it. Well, what about you guys listening? How do you feel about our ranking of the Evil Dead franchise? How would you do it? Yeah. How would you rank this franchise? A little too much love for some installments, not enough for others? Let us know in those comments. Let us fucking have it. Oh. But that does it for us, the Holler Kings, on this hot, sweaty day. <laughs> Until next time. Y'all come back now, you hear? Oh. I brought, uh, I figured... Another fucking list! (laughs)